In this video, I want to give you a simple explanation of fragments and run-ons. And we'll use my dog Finn. She's weird. She sometimes wears antlers. Don't judge her. We'll just use her goofiness for good and learn some grammar. So there's some terms you're going to need in not only this video, but in the other resources that I've linked into on this blog post. The first is a clause. You'll hear other people talk about a clause often. It's a group of words containing a subject and a verb. Some people might also say it's a subject and predicate. There are two types of clauses. The first is an independent clause. This is a sentence. It's a synonym for a sentence. It stands on its own. A group of words containing a subject and verb which expresses a complete thought. Here's an example. Finn wears antlers on very special occasions. It makes sense on its own. Finn is the subject. Wears is the verb. What's that predicate about? Well, the predicate is just anything in the sentence that lets us know more about the verb. So the predicate in this case is wears antlers on very special occasions. When you have that, you have an independent clause. It makes sense on its own. A dependent clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, but it doesn't express a complete thought. Notice if I add one word, when, to that group of words, it no longer can stand on its own. When Finn wears antlers on very special occasions. You want to know more. We have to have more in that sentence to help us understand what that is. So that's our first type of fragment. A fragment can be a dependent clause. It can also be known as a group of words missing a subject, a verb, or both. So, probably need some examples. Here they are. The first example we've already covered. That's our dependent clause. When Finn wears antlers on very special occasions. It has a subject, Finn. It has a verb, wears, but it can't stand on its own. Here's an example of a fragment that's missing a verb, a dog with antlers on its head. It's no action word, so we have a fragment. It can't stand on its own or make sense. And here we're missing a subject, wearing antlers on its head. Who's doing the wearing? We don't know. I mean, from the picture, we know it's a dog, but it's not in this group of words, so we have a fragment. That leads us to a run-on sentence. A run-on sentence is when you have two or more complete sentences incorrectly joined. And remember, a complete sentence is also known as an independent clause. So again, you need some examples for this. Here we have two run-on sentences. Finn wears antlers on very special occasions. She is always embarrassed. This is known as a fused sentence. Two sentences next to each other without any of the correct punctuation. I'll put some color to it to make it help you see it even more clearly. Here's our first sentence in blue and our second sentence in green without punctuation. That honestly doesn't appear that often in my students' writing. However, this next example of a run-on is a very common run-on mistake. It's actually the most common comma error in the world, and there's another video on this idea. But, Finn wears antlers on her head, but she is always embarrassed. We have the first sentence in blue, the second in yellow, and we have a conjunction or a joining word, but, but without this comma, it's missing a comma, we technically have a run-on sentence. So how do we fix these run-on sentences? There are three ways. The first is to add a period, otherwise known as a full stop. When we do that, we always capitalize the first letter of the next sentence. So we have Finn wears antlers on very special occasions, period. She is always embarrassed. You can also use a semicolon. With a semicolon, you're linking two very closely related sentences. It only works if the two sentences are closely related. And a word of warning, you don't want to overuse the semicolon. If you use it too often, it becomes distracting. I think once or twice on a page is probably a good rule of thumb. But it's a great way to add some sentence variety. And the third way to fix a run-on is the one we've already talked about. That's the comma with a conjunction. Finn wears antlers on very special occasions, comma, space, but she is always embarrassed. Without that comma, we have a run-on. If you add it, you fixed that kind of run-on. So, how do you remember conjunctions? Remember the acronym FANBOY. This will give you the most common conjunctions in English. Not all of them, but the most common. For, and, nor, but, or, yet. Good? All right, let's practice some. Ask yourself, do we have a fragment, a run-on, or a complete sentence here? And, if you say a fragment, pat yourself on the back. It is indeed a fragment. We're missing what? Bonus points. 
a verb or predicate. That is correct. We need that action word. What's Finn doing? Well, here's an example. My dog Finn is very intelligent. Here do we have a fragment, a run-on, or a sentence? And you probably know that this is a complete sentence, an independent clause. And it's that very special addition or important addition of is. That's our verb. What's Finn doing? She's being. She is, in this case, very intelligent. And that is true of my dog Finn. Here's another. What do you think? When my dog Finn barks so loudly that my skull feels like it might crack, do I have a fragment, a sentence, or a run-on? And indeed, we have a fragment, again, because we have that word at the beginning, when, and we need something to finish it. So let me finish that thought to make a complete sentence. When my dog Finn barks so loudly that my skull feels like it might crack, comma, I try to remember that I can annoy her too, like by putting antlers on her head. One quick note about a comma rule here, when you have the dependent clause, at the front of the sentence, you always put the comma. If I were to switch this around, I wouldn't need the comma. Um, but I can't really switch that sentence around. Here's one more example. What do we have here? A fragment, a sentence, or a run-on. My dog Finn, the smartest dog I have ever known, can cause me so much stress at times, but she has a very sweet personality, and after barking at strangers, will only want to lick their faces and take a nap with them. This one's trickier. It is a complete sentence. Just because a sentence is long does not mean that it's a run-on sentence. I mentioned this in class. Michael Chabon wrote a seven-page sentence in one of his recent novels. Um, so you can actually make a really long sentence that is not a run-on. And in this case, our first sentence is in blue, our second is in green. Both of those are grammatically correct, and they're joined with a comma and conjunction. I hope this video helps, and I hope the resources on the rest of this blog post will help you as well.